Okay, guys, in this video, we're going to talk about balanced or unbalanced forces. So, be following along in your guided notes. We're in chapter three, guided notes. Fill them out as we go through these slides. So, it says here the forces acting on an object can either be balanced or they can be unbalanced. We're going to talk about each, each case, balanced or unbalanced, and, and talk about how that affects motion. So, if the forces acting on an object are balanced, then there is no net force acting on the object. Okay, I like to think of it as, uh, you know, we've all played, played tug of war, right? So if we, ha if we have a tug of war team, okay, and they're all grabbing hold of the rope, what if these guys are pulling with 10 newtons of force? That's not very much force, is it? And these guys pull with 10 newtons of force. Are the forces balanced between them? Yeah. So what would their motion look like? If they both pulled with the same force, are they going to move? No, nope, they're not going to move. So if the forces acting on an object are unbalanced, then there is a net force acting on the object. So now, what if these guys started pulling with 20 newtons of force? Is there an unbalanced force now? Yes, yeah, so there's a net force there, right? What would the net force be here in this situation? What do you say, Derek? 10 newtons to the left would be the, the net force, right? Because they're pulling with 10 newtons more than the other side. So that would be your net force. Good job. Would there be motion in that case? Yes. Yes. Then, then they're going to start moving. Which way? Up to the left. To the left course, right? So, <clears throat> balanced forces are experienced when there's no net force acting on the object. The forces in each direction balance each other out. Okay, here's an example. This physics textbook right here, sitting on the, on the desk. What force is pulling that physics te textbook straight down? Gravity, right? Force of gravity. Um, just to review from last time, force of gravity, a lot of textbooks call it what? Weight. Okay. Does it mean the same thing? Do you find it with the same way? Yeah. Okay. So the force of gravity is pulling it down, but that book is not moving through the desk, is it? It's just sitting there. So there must be some force that's balancing it. What is that force called? What's this force that's going straight up? It's called the normal force. Okay. And if the book is not moving, what can you say about the normal force? and the force of gravity in this case. They're balanced, which means they are equal, right? Okay. It wants you to draw a free body diagram for you standing on the ground. Are there forces acting on you? Are the forces acting on you balanced or unbalanced? So take a second, draw you a little stick figure and the ground. Then draw the free body diagram with all the forces that are acting on you. Okay, so Here's you standing on the ground. Now draw a free body diagram. Include all the forces that are acting on you. Okay, let's see if we got it. What force is pulling you down, guys? Gravity. I'm going to call it weight this time. Same thing. But are you falling through the ground? Nope. No, so there must be some force balancing that. What is it? Yeah, the ground is putting a force back on you. What do we call that force? Yeah, that's called the normal force. So the normal force is pointing straight up. What can you say about the length of these two arrows? They've got to be the same length, right? They're balanced. Okay. So then it says, are the forces acting on you balanced or unbalanced? Well, you're not moving through the ground, so it must be balanced. Okay, also, draw a free body diagram for you pushing on a wall. Are the forces acting on you balanced or unbalanced? Okay, let's do the same thing. Here you are. Now you're pushing on this wall right here. Okay. So, just like this, I'm pushing on the wall, right? Let's say I'm putting, let's say I'm putting 10 newtons of force on the wall. I'm not pushing real hard on it, I'm just lightly pushing on the wall. 
Is my, are we going through the wall? Is my hand going to go through the wall? No. How come? The wall pushes back with 10 newtons of force. Okay. Now, are the forces acting on you balanced or unbalanced? They're balanced again. They're not, they're not moving. So. Okay, let's talk about unbalanced forces now. An unbalanced force is experienced when there is a net force acting on the object. So unbalanced equals a net force. Here's an example. Okay, so this yellow object has some forces acting on it. It says there's a strong force to the left. That's why this vector arrow is way longer than the one to the, to the right, which is very weak. Which way would this object move, guys? Isn't it pretty obvious? Yeah, if you're pushing harder to the left, there's going to be a net force to the left, which is going to cause that object to move to the left. Okay, it says draw a free body diagram for an apple falling out of a tree in mid-flight. Are the forces acting on the apple balanced or unbalanced? Okay. So I'm going to draw a box for the apple. I know an apple is more round, but to a free body diagram, we're just going to draw a box. Okay, in mid-flight, what forces are acting on that object? What's going down? Force of gravity or weight? Okay. Are there forces going left and right? No. It's just falling out of the tree, so it's going straight down. Are there forces acting and pushing this apple up? Yes. Yes. What do we call that force? Air resistance. Yeah, the force of air resistance. Okay. So, um, what can you say about the length of these two arrows, though? Air resistance is going to be much shorter. Yeah, good job. How do we know that? Because it's falling. Yeah, there is a there is a net force. I always write net force with a capital F with net as spelled out as a, sub, a subscript there. We know there is a net force going straight down because it's moving down. It's falling down. There's movement there. All right. Forces will affect an object's motion in the following ways. <coughs> this is very important. Number one, okay. Number one, an object will not change its state of motion, i.e., not accelerate, unless there's a net force that acts on it. So, unless you have a net force, you're not going to accelerate or change motion. Number two, if there is a net force, so now there is a net force, an unbalanced force acting on the object, it will accelerate that object. So if there's a net force, it's going to accelerate it. Number three, if there is no net force, so the forces acting on the object are balanced, the object uh, remains at constant velocity or it remains at rest. Okay, it's either going at constant velocity or it's staying at rest. That's this is maybe the most important one. Okay, number two and number three. If there's a net force, what's it going to do, guys? Number two, if there's a net force, what's it going to do? Accelerate. Okay. Well, number three says if there's no net force, you're either going to be moving at constant velocity or you're going to remain at rest. So if, you, if you've got this car, you're, you're going down the road, and let's say you got it on cruise control, and you're going 65 miles per hour, constant velocity. Are there net forces acting on your car? Resistance. Yeah, there's a lot of forces acting on the car, but are they balanced or unbalanced? Is there a net force? That's what I'm asking. No. Okay, you've got an applied force from the engine that's propelling your car forward, right? But if you're going at cruise control, you're traveling at constant velocity, you can say that the force of friction here is equal to your applied force. 
Now, what happens when you press on the gas? Then you start to do what? Accelerate. Accelerate. When you start to accelerate, that's when the applied force becomes larger. Now there is a net force, so whenever there's a net force, you will accelerate. But if the forces are balanced, you're either going at constant velocity or you're staying at rest. Yeah. Okay, we're going to talk about Newton's second law for a second. Newton's second law is very important. Okay, it says that the acceleration of an object equals the net force acting on the object divided by the object's mass. Okay. Let's read that again. The acceleration of an object equals the net force acting on the object divided by the object's mass. So here's the equation for that. Acceleration of an object is equal to the force put on that object divided by the object's divided by the object's mass. So let's look at that equation. Let's make sense of this mathematically. <clears throat> what happens to the acceleration of an object, guys, if I increase, if I increase the mass of the object? So right now I'm dividing by a larger number. What's going to happen to this number? It's going to go down. So the more massive the object is, if you're still applying the same amount of force, but you got a more massive object, the acceleration will go down. Okay, here's an example. So, say I'm going to kick a, oh, I don't know, a tennis ball. And then, I'm going to kick a bowling ball with the same force. It's obvious, right? Which one's going to be accelerated more? The tennis ball is accelerated more. Why? Because as mass goes down, as mass goes down, what's going to happen to the acceleration now if you divide by a smaller number? Acceleration goes up. Okay, we've got to be able to understand it from this equation here. That's all Newton's second law says. It's pretty easy. What's that? Okay. This, this equation goes along well with Newton's second law, but how you're going to see it written almost 99% of the time is this one. Newton's second law is this right here. Okay, this is Newton's second law. Force net is equal to ma. The net force is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. That's probably the most famous, that's the most famous equation in physics right there. F equals ma. Okay. But the, the force that we're talking about there is a net force. So force net is equal to the object's mass times its acceleration. Okay, some textbooks, guys, I, I'd like to introduce another way of writing net force. Some physics textbooks will, will write this symbol. It's a Greek letter, it's a sigma. It means to sum up all the forces. Well, that's the same thing as net force. So somewhere in your books, on the side, somewhere on the top or the bottom, write this. Force net is equal to this symbol. Okay? They're the same thing. They mean the same thing. It just means take the net force. Okay, remember, acceleration occurs whenever an unbalanced force acts on an object. So if I have this marker here, are the forces acting on it right now balanced or unbalanced? It's just sitting there on the counter. It's balanced. But now what can you say about the forces acting on it? They are unbalanced. I'm putting a net force on it, right? If I put a net force, what's going to happen to the marker? It's going to accelerate and move. And so that's how all movement happens. Okay, there's a direct relationship between force and acceleration. There is a direct relationship between force and acceleration. The greater the force you apply to the object, the greater it will accelerate. 
That makes sense, right? If you, Sam, if you're kicking the football, you're going to have to kick it harder to make a 50-yard field goal than a 20-yard field goal, right? Yeah, I mean, it's just obvious. That's, that's pretty common sense. There's a direct relationship between force and acceleration. As force goes up, what's going to happen to acceleration, guys? It's going to go up. So as force goes up, the acceleration will go up. Now, what if force goes down? Acceleration will go down. That's what a direct relationship means. If one goes up, the other one goes up. If one goes down, the other one goes down. Okay? Now, there is an inverse relationship between mass and acceleration. So there's an inverse relationship between the mass of the object and its acceleration. The greater the mass of the object, the less it will accelerate when a given force is applied. So, yeah, let's say I'm kicking a football. Let's say I kick it with a force of 100 newtons. Okay? And then let's say I do this again, but now I kick, I kick a bowling ball with 100 newtons. Okay? So as mass goes up, mass, mass is much higher with the bowling ball. Which one's going, going to accelerate more? Which one's going to accelerate more? The football. Acceleration in this case is going to go up. Acceleration at the, with the bowling ball? Because it's more massive, will go down. Notice if one goes up, the other one goes down. That's what an inverse relationship does. And yes, yeah, it's common sense. Okay, let's go over some example problems and, and some practice problems here with Newton's second law. It says, these force diagrams depict the magnitudes and the direction of the forces acting upon four objects. In each case, the down force is the force of gravity. Rank these objects in order of their acceleration from largest to smallest. Okay, let me move this out of the way. Okay, so we've got object A, B, C, and D. These four different situations. Four different scenarios here. Which one, it says, now we're going to rank them in order of their acceleration from largest acceleration to smallest. Which, which object is going to accelerate the most, guys? Let's look at it. What are you saying? Object C. Okay. How come? What's the net force acting on that object? Is there a net force up and down, first of all? Nope. They balance each other out. 50 up, balances 50 down. 10 to the left, 40 to the, to the right. What's the net force? 30 newtons, and it's to the right, correct? 30 newtons to the right. Okay. What object is going to be accelerated next? The most. A? Okay. Is there a net force up and down? 50 and 50, they balance each other out. 20 to the left, 0 to the, to the right. What's the net force? 20 newtons to the left. So yeah, let's put object A next. Okay. Object D is next. Object D, what's the net force acting on D, guys? Um, 15 newtons. 15, which way? 15 newtons to the right, so D comes next. And then, uh, which one's going to accelerate the least? Object B. Yeah. Look at object B, guys. Is there a net force up and down? No. What about left and right? 50 and 50 balance each other out, so the net force here is equal to zero. Okay. So, let's be careful about, about B, though. Could it be moving? It could be. How would you describe its motion if it is moving? Constant. constant velocity. This one could be going at a constant velocity. What can you say about A, 
C and D though. These guys are going to be doing what? Accelerating. They are accelerating. This one's going to accelerate to the left because there's a net force of 20 to the left. Which way is this one going to be accelerating? To the right. And object D, accelerating to the right. Okay. Practice problem number six, guys. Let's do it. It says the little boy pushes a wagon with his dog in it. The mass of the dog and the wagon together is 45 kilograms. The wagon accelerates at 0 0.85 meters per second squared. What force is the boy pulling with? Whenever you get a question like this and there's, it gives you acceleration and it's asking for force, what equation should we use? What's Newton's second law? What does it say, guys? Force net is equal to what? MA. Force equals MA. Most famous equation in physics, right there. Okay, what I always like to do is draw a picture of what's happening, okay? So we've got this wagon. I promise, guys, if you draw a picture, physics is so much easier. You can actually visualize what's happening here. Okay, the, the wagon has a mass, the wagon and the dog have a mass of 45 kgs. I like to put that down somewhere. Let's write all the known stuff it gives us. Okay, um, and the wagon accelerates, so he's pulling it, so it's accelerating at 0 0.85 meters per second squared. And we want to know with what force we want to know with what force he's pulling it with. Okay? And we can figure this out with Newton's second law. Okay? We don't know the force. So I'm just going to keep calling it force net. Do we know the mass, guys, of that wagon and dog? 45? 45 what? Kilograms. kilograms. That's what it's got to be and it's got to be in kilograms. Remember those units. Okay? And we're going to times that by acceleration. What was the acceleration? 0 0.85 meters per second squared. Okay. Grab a calculator. Quick, easy calculation here. So force net is equal to 38.25, let's just round it to 3, 38.3 what? What are my units for a force, guys? Newtons. How do we abbreviate Newtons? Capital N. Okay. Remember, Newtons has to be measured in kilogram meter per second squared. So we've got to be in those units. So he's pulling it with a force of 38.3 newtons. Is that a lot of force? It's enough to move it, right? Yeah. Remember, what is one newton, guys? How, what's a good way of remembering the force of one newton? It's the weight of a what? An apple, a medium-sized apple, or a quarter-pound hamburger. So that's, that's one newton. 38.3, yeah, a little more. Practice problem number seven. Try this one, guys. Now, we've talked about a couple of ways. Before you start this problem, let me, let me give you a hint. We've talked about a couple of ways to find acceleration. We can use Newton's second law, which says that, if you rearrange the equation. Or, how did we talk about it last chapter? Acceleration is equal to what? So now we have two ways of finding acceleration. Okay, that might, that might be a, a hint that you'll need to, in order to solve this problem. I'm going to hit pause, try it on your own first, and see if you can get it. Okay. Okay, so let's start, guys. Um, when I do a physics problem, I like to underline what it gives us. It says a sports car accelerates from 0 to 60 miles per hour. Now, 
we don't really want our units in miles per hour, but lucky for us, they gave it to us in meters per second. Okay, 60 miles per hour is 27 meters per second. It accelerated to that, to that speed in 6.3 seconds. And it says the car exerts a force, so the force of 4,106 newtons. What's the mass of the car? Now when they ask us for something, I like to circle it. That's what we're looking for, mass. Do you know an equation with force and mass in it? Yeah, we just learned it, right? What is it? Most famous equation in physics? Force net is equal to what? MA. That's Newton's second law, right there. Okay, let's see if we have enough information. Force is uh, 4,106 newtons is equal. We don't know the mass of the car. That's what we're looking for. But we don't know A either. We don't know its acceleration yet. But is there a way we can find it? Right here. Remember last chapter. Acceleration is change in velocity over change in time. So let's use that. Velocity final minus velocity initial over time final minus time initial. Let's plug in. What was the final velocity? You guys help me out. What was the final velocity? 27. Good. What was the initial velocity? Zero. Yeah, it started at zero. What was time final? 6.3 seconds. What was time initial? It's always zero. It's always zero. Unless it states otherwise. So 27 divided by 6.3. I'm getting that the acceleration is equal to 4.29, if you round it to two decimal places, meters per second squared. Okay? Now we can plug this acceleration into Newton's second law. Okay? 4.29 meters per second squared. Okay. Help me out. What are we, how are we going to solve for m? We have an equation with one unknown. You going to divide it? Both sides? Okay, cancels out over here. So 4,106 divided by 4.29. What's the mass of the car, guys? What did you guys get? Anyone else get that? Anyone verify that? Okay, good. What's my unit for mass? Remember, we're, we're, we, we had Newtons here. Newtons always measures in how, many, how much mass? Kilograms. That's got to be kilograms. Please put the units as well as the magnitude there. Okay, very good. Before I stop the video, I want to review what we just talked about today. Okay? I'm going to give you some free body diagrams here, and I'm going to ask you about the motion of that object. Okay? If this, let's say this is my free body diagram, and I've got 10 newtons this way and 5 newtons this way. First of all, balanced or unbalanced forces? They're balanced. Unbalanced. Is there a net force on this object? Yes. How much would the net force be? Five newtons to the right. Good. Would be five newtons to the right. Now describe the object's motion. What would it do? Accelerate to the right. Yeah, it would accelerate to the right. Whenever there's a net force, the thing is going to accelerate in the direction of the net force. Okay, let's talk about this one now. Say there's ten newtons to the right, but there's also 10 newtons to the left. Balanced or unbalanced? Balanced. Describe its motion. Say it's at rest. What's it going to do? It's going to remain at rest, right? Like this pen that's on the counter, if I put 10 newtons to the right and 10 newtons to the left at the same time, what's it going to do? Well, it's just going to sit there. It's going to remain at rest. But what if this was a car and it was traveling on cruise control going, you know, 20 miles per hour? Describe how its motion is going to change there, or does it? It's balanced, so it's going to stay at constant velocity, right? So, okay, very good. Guys, we've learned enough now to do a 
a worksheet in the, in the student workbook. So free body diagrams worksheet, Newton's first law and Newton's second law worksheets. So those three uh, worksheets are something that you can do and hopefully this helped.